everyone, it's Lori again and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be boiling eggs. Actually, I steamed them. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and go on and make some shelf-stable pickled eggs. Um, I really noticed that with uh, our chickens, when you have fresh, farm fresh eggs, um, you know, farm fresh eggs are amazing for everything except for boiling them. If you try to boil a farm fresh egg, they just don't want to peel. And um, so I did a, a lot of running around on the internet and uh, tried quite a few different uh, methods. Um, some people suggest putting um, salt in the water. Some people suggest putting vinegar in the water. Some people suggest putting uh, baking, soda, baking soda in the water to change the pH level right at the end of the cooking process. Um, none of those things worked real well for me at all. And then I came across um, this information about uh, steaming them. And I do a lot of steam canning and I thought, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And so I tried steaming them and I'll tell you what, I haven't done it in a traditional um, boiling method where you're where your eggs are submerged all the way underneath the hot boiling water. I haven't done that in quite a few years now. This uh, steaming method just works beautifully. And no matter how fresh the eggs are, even if that egg was laid the very same day that you are going to steam it or boil it um, with the steaming method, it just peels like a dream, uh, which I know many of you who have fresh eggs are probably going, what? <laughs> Fresh eggs are just really hard to get peeled. Um, but with the steaming method that I'm going to show you today, take my word for it. It's just like a miracle. It really is. Um, but I'll show you how I set up and, and I use my canner. You don't have to use your stovetop canner for this. You can actually just use a large stock pot. So if you have a large stock pot and if you have one of these metal colanders that have the nice legs, um, I suggest using one that has legs on it because you want to keep your eggs up out of the water. Your eggs do not want to be submerged in the water at all. They want to be above it. So if you have a stock pot that's large enough that you can get a colander in the bottom of it, this works perfectly. You just put in about two inches of water in the bottom of this and then start stacking your raw eggs inside of that colander. Um, but I just really love my canner because it holds so much more. I use my canner for everything from cooking to obviously steaming eggs. I steam vegetables in here all the time and obviously I use it for canning too. Uh, but it's just something that always is out in my kitchen and I use it quite frequently. So I'll show you how I set my canner up. Now with your canner you always get one of these handy dandy little risers and they're right to keep your jars up off the bottom of the canner. Uh, what I do is I take an old pie plate and I've got this little metal pie plate, you know, it's not a valuable plate by any means, um, but I've got this pie plate and I've put in about, oh, I don't know, a quart of water, maybe a little bit of more um, than that, but, but what I do is I invert this plate and I put it in the bottom of my canner and then I put my riser on top of it so that the water is not above that riser. It's all below the riser. So the eggs will be suspended up above the water level. And then I start putting my eggs in there. And since I have quite a few eggs today, um, it'll take me a few minutes to get these safely into the canner. So I'm going to stop the video at this point in time and I'm just going to stack all of my eggs in the canner and then we'll come back and I'll tell you what I do next. Okay, so I've got all of my eggs placed in my canner and Remember, this is suspended above the level of the water. None of my eggs are down underneath the level of the water. They're all above it. So all they're going to be doing is getting the steam of the boiling water, and that's how they're going to cook. Now, the reason why I feel like this works so well is if you think about um, the mechanics of an egg, you have a natural bloom on the outside, which seals the egg, and then you have a membrane on the inside of the egg. When the egg is submerged underneath water. It can't evaporate out of the shell very well. The moisture inside the egg can't evaporate out of the shell very well. And that's what makes your eggs peel well. That's why they suggest to boil older eggs, like let them sit in your refrigerator for a couple of weeks before you hard boil them because they peel easier. 
The reason why they peel easier is because they've had time to sit there and evaporate and pull away from that membrane on the inside of the shell. Now in steaming, what you're doing is you're just speeding up that aging process. So with the steam inside of your canner, you are actually evaporating some of the moisture out of the inside of the egg so that it pulls away from the membrane that's on the inside of the shell and it will peel easier. So I have all my eggs above the level of the water in the bottom of the pot, like I showed you. Now if you're going to do this in a stock pot with, your, uh, with a metal colander in the bottom of it, you'd have two inches or so of water in the bottom of that pot. And then I want you to use a really good um, form-fitting lid, a good sealing lid on your pot. And once you hear that water boiling, you know, your lid's going to get steamy. Once you hear that water boiling, that's when I want you to start timing the amount of time that you're going to steam your eggs. Now, the entire time that your eggs are steaming inside of your stock pot, don't, don't pick the lid up and peek. No peeking. No peeking. You leave all that steam inside of that pot while you're cooking those eggs. You don't want it to cool down and slow down the cooking process. Um, you want to make sure that that lid stays on and you don't peek. So um, with my canner, all I'm going to do is I'm going to place my lid, get it facing the right way there, place my lid lock it in place and I'm going to turn on my heat, my heat and I'm just going to do almost like you normally would with a steam canning process or with a regular pressure canning process. You're going to bring your canner up to a vent. Now your airlock that locks your lid closed, this is going to pop up on its own. There's going to be enough steam inside that canner that it will pop up on its own. So you bring this to a full vent, your airlock will pop up and you just vent your canner the entire time that you're boiling or steaming your eggs. Now I've got about four dozen eggs in here. Once this comes to a vent, I will start timing my timing process. And this is where you need to play with it a little bit to find out what works best for you as far as um, the amount of cooking that you want to happen with your eggs. But I will say that the longer you steam them, the easier they are to peel. If you're still having difficulties with your fresh eggs not wanting to peel, even using this method of cooking or steaming or whatever, if you're still having problems with them not peeling well, it just simply means that you're not steaming them long enough. So next time, increase the amount of time, you know, than what you did for your first time of trying it. Increase the amount of time, and I swear you won't have problems. I have approximately four dozen eggs in my canner today. I've um, found out that personally, I like to do one dozen of eggs. I generally will do them for around 12 or 13 minutes. Um, two to four dozen eggs, I generally like to do them from 17 to 20 minutes. And if I have more than that, and believe me, in my large canner, I have steamed up to over 100 eggs in one load. And I did end up steaming them for approximately a half hour, I think it was 35 minutes, and they pilled really well at that point in time. But that's one of those things that you do have to play around a little bit with you, you know, with your own um, canner, your own heat source, your own eggs. Um, but that's kind of a rough uh, graph or uh, something that you can follow. Um, like I said, I have about four dozen eggs in there today. And so I'm going to steam these for probably 20 minutes. Um, and at that point in time, then I will show you how easily they peel. So I will get my canner started here. And uh, I'll wait for it to come to a vent. And then I will start timing my 20 minutes. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how I get them peeled so quick and easy. All right, guys. So my canner has been steaming with the eggs inside for 20 minutes. That's what I set it for today was 20 minutes. So once my timer goes off, then I'm going to allow my um, pressure vent to drop down on its own. Now there is no pressure. I never put my weight on, but there's enough steam pressure to keep that airlock up. And once I turn the heat off, that will drop down and I'll let it sit for just a couple of minutes to cool off just slightly. And then I'm going to take it over to the sink and I'm going to 
put my boiled or steamed eggs into ice water that is in my sink. So I'll move my camera over there and I'll show you how easy they peel. All right guys, so I'm back. Now I just simply um, let my cooler can off a couple of minutes and then I brought my eggs over and I took them out and I put them into a, an ice water bath in my sink. I just use one of these nice little freezy things to get the, the water good and cold. Um, it felt a little warm after I soaked them a few minutes and so I drained that water off and I put uh, more fresh water in. So these eggs have been cooling in ice water for, oh, I don't know, approximately eight or 10 minutes, okay? But now they're nice and cool. Um, and I just wanna show you, now, like I said, these are all, uh, these are all eggs from our hens. So these are very fresh eggs. Uh, they're probably not more, any of them, None of them are more than like maybe four days old, okay? So these are super, super freshly laid eggs. And I just wanna show you how easy it is after steaming them so that, like I said, so that it can evaporate from the inside of the egg. These shells just come, look at this. It's almost like the egg wants to jump right out of the shell. I mean, if you are uh, somebody who has their own hens, you know how terrible it is to peel a fresh egg. And look at this, beautiful. No flesh has been torn off at all. We'll do a couple more here for you. Look at that, I can remove half the egg. Half the egg just came right off. This is almost like they have been aged, but they have not been aged. These are fresh eggs. Look at this beautiful, beautiful eggs for pickling. There's no uh, white has been removed with the shell. They just come out just perfectly. And now, like I said, I did about four dozen eggs today and I steamed them for approximately 20 minutes. Well, not approximately, I did steam them for 20 minutes. You know, I brought my canner up to a vent and then I started timing 20 minutes. And look at this, it just, these eggs just like literally almost fall right out of the shells. Look at how beautiful, beautiful that works. And these are perfect candidates for pickling eggs because they're just pretty. There's, there's no whites missing, it's not torn, it's not chipped apart, it's just gonna look really nice in a jar. Now I'm not saying that you can't use non-perfect eggs for pickling, you can. As long as you don't have any of your egg yolk exposed. Um, and the reason why I say that is when you're pickling eggs, um, if you have that egg yolk exposed, it's going to make your pickling brine um, cloudy. You know, that, that yellow yolk will, uh, will just make all of the brine cloudy. Now, it's not a danger at all. You can still pickle those if you want to, if you have some yolk exposed and you wanna pickle it, that egg, that's absolutely fine. There's no danger in doing that. It's just undesirable in recipes on the books because if you have that yellow yolk exposed, it clouds up the brine and makes that jar of pickled eggs look yucky, I guess. But it's not a safety factor. But these are just absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, um, once I learned how to steam boil eggs, I, I have not done a traditional um, boiling method in years. I, this is just all I do is I steam my eggs because our eggs are fresh, they're impossible to peel. Like I said, when you start playing with your, um, with your steaming times, uh, you'll figure out what works for you. And if they're not peeling as easily as mine are peeling today, you're just simply not steaming them long enough, so just increase your steaming time. So, I'm going to, there, I'm back on frame. I'm gonna finish peeling my eggs, which will take me mm, probably five minutes, <laughs> which is amazing for that many eggs. Um, but that's how excited I am about this method. Um, it won't take me very long at all to get them all peeled. And uh, then when I come back, I'd like to share with you a, uh, a pickled egg recipe that has literally been in my family for four generations. Um, so it's very near and dear to my heart. This is a shelf stable 
pickled egg, meaning um, I will hot water bath them in canning jars and I do not have to stick them in the refrigerator. They will last on the shelf for years and years and years. Um, it's a very basic recipe. Uh, don't let it uh, frighten you at all. Um, I, we use nothing but plain vinegar. We don't dilute the vinegar. I swear that this is why we can have them shelf stable for so many years. You would think that a pickled recipe, a pickled egg recipe with straight vinegar would just be so sharp and have so much of a bite that you wouldn't even want to eat them. But there's something about the composition of eggs that after they sit in that pickling brine, the eggs themselves seem to tone the vinegar down and um, they just turn out wonderful. Um, just to eat plain, I use uh, my shelf staple pickled eggs in egg salad and I make deviled eggs out of them. They make a wonderful pickly deviled egg. Um, I put them in pasta salads. We slice them over lettuce salads. Uh, I use a lot of pickled eggs. This is just a wonderful way of preserving your excess eggs indefinitely. Um, I can't even tell you, really, I can't even give you an amount of years that these can stay on the shelves because I've had pickled eggs that are 10 years old on my shelves and they're still usable and safe to eat. Uh, so like I said, this is a near and dear to my heart uh, family recipe, but it's just so simple that I just want to share it with all of you so that you can preserve your eggs in this way too. Um, so I'll be back in about 10 minutes and I will show you how I make the brine and can my pickled eggs. All right guys, so I'm back. All of my eggs are peeled and I am getting ready to make the brine for my pickled eggs. Now my recipe is two cups vinegar, one teaspoon of pickling salt, and one teaspoon of pickling spice. What I do is I make a bag out of cheesecloth for my spice just simply because we really don't like um, trying to pick the spices off of the pickled eggs after they're in the jars. And so I just simply cut myself um, a piece of cheesecloth here and I'll open it up, which this is always a trick. I'm sure if any of you have ever used uh, cheesecloth, you know exactly it's kind of hard sometimes to find those edges. But I'll open it up and I will double it over because it's usually folded in three. I'll double it over and this is what I make my pickling spice bag out of. It's just cheesecloth. And since I'm using one teaspoon of pickling spice per recipe, um, I only have enough clean jars right now and I didn't want to run to storage and get more jars clean. So all I can do is approximately, even though I have more eggs than that, all I can personally can today is three dozen eggs. And so I'm going to triple my brine recipe. So like I said, a single recipe for, for a dozen eggs is two cups vinegar, one teaspoon of pickling spice, and one teaspoon of salt. But I'm tripling that. And so I'm going to put three teaspoons of pickling spice into a little homemade bag here. And this is just generic, you know, I'm Mrs. Wage, it's, it's mixed pickling spice. This is what I use. So what I do is I just draw up my opposite corners and I just tie them tightly so that those spices can't escape through my mesh bag. I guess I don't really tie it completely tightly. I want my I want my spices to float around a little bit in there, you know, so that the, the vinegar brine can kind of slosh through this baggie. Um, but when I say tie it tightly, you know what I mean by tie it so that your spices cannot escape the bag. So I'm just going to tie up my opposite corners here. And make this little disposable spice bag. I have extra material there so I might just go ahead and not right over the top of that just to make it a little bit more secure. Now if you have string that you want to tie this little bag shut with, you know, just 
take it and twist it a little bit and tie it with string or even um, use uh, like one of those bread bag twisty ties. That's fine. Excuse me, I feel a cough coming on here. <coughs> um, but what I do is I just tie the corners of the bag up so that none of my pickling spices can escape that bag. And that's what I consider my pickling spice bag. Um, now, when I say canning salt, one teaspoon of canning salt, um, definitely, if you have canning salt or kosher salt, go ahead and use one teaspoon. I consistently use fine ground um, pink Himalayan salt, and I'm sure that you've heard that in a lot of my videos. It's just what I use. And so I always cut that measurement in half. And so I'm just going to put in about, I don't know, a little bit over one teaspoon simply because I'm using the fine ground Himalayan and I don't want it to be too salty. So instead of three teaspoons, I'll probably put, I don't know, closer to one and a half teaspoon in. And that will be an equivalent of canning salt or kosher salt. So we have, let me move this up just a little bit. So like I said, I was tripling my recipe because all I have is enough jars uh, clean and ready for about three dozen eggs today. And so I have my eggs um, steamed and peeled and I'm making a triple recipe for three dozen eggs. I need three recipes of brine. So I have six cups of vinegar in my pot and um, then I have my salt in there and I'm simply going to drop in my uh, spice bag. And I'm going to bring that up to a boil, and I'm going to let that boil um, for five minutes. And after five minutes of boiling, I'll remove my spice bag, and then what I'm going to do is add my three dozen hard-boiled eggs to that boiling brine, lower it to a simmer, and allow those eggs just to simmer in the brine, in the pot that I'm cooking it all in. I'm going to let them simmer for five minutes. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how I pack them into the jars and get them canned up. All right, so my pickle and brine has been boiling for five minutes with just uh, the vinegar and salt and um, that little spice bag in it. So after five, my five minutes, I just fish out my little spice bag and set that aside. And then... I turn my heat down because now you're just going to want to simmer your eggs in that, okay? So then I'm going to put my three dozen eggs in. There's 36. I think I'm going to add <clears throat> just a few more in case I have smaller eggs and I can fit a couple extras in each canning jar. So I'd much rather have too many than not enough. So I'm just going to go in and put in like 40 eggs, but I'm still counting it as three dozen. But I have turned the heat down on low, and now I'm going to allow this to simmer for an additional 10 minutes. And what that does is it kind of infuses that vinegar into the eggs before I hot pack them in jars. So I'm just going to let that simmer, and then we'll come back in a minute. All right, guys, so my eggs have been simmering in my brine for 10 minutes, and so now is the time that I'm going to pack my eggs into my canning jars. And this is where it really gets fun for you. This is where you can really individualize your recipe to your taste. Um, I personally prefer to just pack them plain with just the eggs and the brine. Occasionally, I will add slices of onions, um, but I just find them a lot more versatile 
if I keep it plain that way, it can go into egg salad sandwiches, potato salad without any issues. I can make deviled eggs without any issues. If I add a whole lot of hot, spicy, zippy stuff to my jar of eggs, it just doesn't leave them as versatile. They're wonderful for um, just eating as snacks that way, but I just don't find it as versatile. So I really prefer to just pack them plain. And if I'm packing them plain, um, all I simply do, <clears throat> and I'm going to point out too, that when I'm doing pickled eggs, I really prefer to use a narrow or a regular mouth jar. I don't like to use wide mouth jars. Uh, with the regular mouth jar, the shoulders of the jar tend to hold the eggs down into the brine better. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. It um, holds the eggs down into the brine better. And so that's why I generally, when I'm doing pickled eggs, I always like to use just a regular mouth size jar. Of course, you can use whatever you want to use. I'm just telling you from my experience, that's what I prefer to do is regular, normal size jar, not the wide mouth jars, just simply because it holds them down better. So what I do then is I just start adding my eggs. And like I said, 12 eggs normally fit very comfortably, comfortably into a quart-sized jar. So if you're only making one single recipe, 12 eggs in a jar plus your two cups of brine mix that you've heated up and you will have a full jar. Now I do have some smaller eggs today from a couple of newer hens that just started laying. So I'm going to try to fit maybe one or two extra eggs in there. See if I can get them underneath the shoulder of the jar without mushing them too much. There we are, we're good. All right, and then after you have your, uh, your eggs packed in your jar, then simply fill your jar up with brine To within. Now like I said, most of my canning I do one inch headspace and that's what I do. I do within one inch headspace on my eggs also. Just kind of cover them up, make sure that they're covered. Now this isn't going to expand or bubble over, okay? And I don't have any grease on there. Normally I have a rag, I don't have one handy tonight, but since I'm working with vinegar, um, I don't really worry about that not sealing. So wipe your rim, place your uh, flat, and I see that I have forgotten some rings here tonight. Obviously I'm not prepared, but I will stop the video and I'll come back in just a second. Okay, so while I was off getting my rings, I figured that I'd better, uh, I'd better get a rag and, and wipe my rim just to, to show you that I do practice safe <laughs> oh, you know, life's funny. Anyway, tighten that ring just to finger tight. Now, um, if you recall on my other videos, I always say whatever temperature food you are canning, you want to match the temperature of your canner. So I have about two quarts of water in my um, pressure canner here. Now I'm not going to pressure can these, these are actually water baths, but I'm using my pressure canner as a steam canner or a water bather tonight. And so I heated my water in my canner to boiling, so it's as hot as what these eggs and the brine are. And this is normally how I pack my pickled eggs. They're just plain pickled eggs. There's not a whole lot of spiciness going on in there or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set that in my canner. And then I will show you another variant. And I'm going to do these in, in uh, smaller jars simply because, like I said, I like the versatility of just my plain pickled eggs. But I will show you other things that you can do. When I said that this is the time that you can really become creative, 
this is the time that you can just put yourself into this jar whatever you want to do however you want to spice them up you go ahead and go for it because since this is a hundred percent vinegar brine the acidity level is going to cover whatever additional ingredients you might stick into this canning jar so one of the things that i do like to do is i like adding sliced onions so i'll throw a couple of sliced onions in there and then i'll start packing my eggs again let's see we got three there let's add a few red pepper flakes okay that's going to leave a little bit of a bite don't want too much and another thing i'm going to add in this one is a little slice a whole clove of garlic that's going to add a lot of interest to that might throw in another onion maybe two onions so i have three in there i should be able to fit six eggs into this pint size jar three four five and six going to remove that just so that I can press my egg down underneath the shoulder of the jar. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now you can see that I have a few of my red pepper flakes in there. My onions are in there. I could top it off with another onion if I wanted to. This is where you just really get to be creative and make this your own signature dish. Um, so after I've got that all packed in there, just like my first jar, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cover that all with brine. And there we are. Wipe my rim. Place my lid. And my band. Finger tight and into the canner. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, pack the rest of my jars and get it all going in the canner. And then we will return in just a couple of minutes and I will show you how I steam can these eggs. Get a couple of them in there. You know, this time, I, like I said, total creative freedom. I'm going to put a little splash. Now this will... This is hot sauce. This will change the color of the brine inside of your pickled egg jar. But I'm going to put a little, just a little splash and mix that up. I shook it up and so it's just really spurting out of there. I don't think I'll be licking that off my fingers, huh? <laughs> anyway, I put a little splash of hot sauce in there. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to... I don't have a knife handy. See, this is what this is what you do. You improvise. I've got my scissors handy, and I know it's clean. So I just cut that clove of garlic in half because I feel like a whole clove of garlic in a little pint jar is a little too much for us. So I just went ahead and I cut that in half. I add maybe a couple onions again. I have two eggs in there so far. Three, four. five six and we'll just kind of settle things down in that jar and try to get that egg in underneath the shoulder of the jar to hold it under the brine i'm going to add another piece of onion in there and then we will fill with just the vinegar brine clean place on my rag where I didn't wipe off that hot sauce. Wipe that rim. Place my flat and my ring. There we go. Now as you can see with that hot sauce in there, it's going to kind of cloud up, you know, obviously. Red stuff going into a clear brine, it's going to cloud it up. But those are going to be tasty. Nice. All right, so I'm going to continue packing my uh, the rest of my jars, 
and uh, then we'll come back after I get them all in the can. All right, guys, so I got all of my eggs packed into my jars, and as you can see, that was almost the perfect amount of brine. There is not very much brine left in my pan at all. So um, this recipe is pretty much spot on. And like I said, this is a recipe um, that is now a fourth generation recipe in my family. Um, so like I said, it's near and dear to my heart. And uh, my family has been making pickled eggs like this literally for generations. Uh, so because of the... Uh, the full strength vinegar, they are absolutely um, safe for the shelf after you hot water bath or steam can them. Can them. I'm going to tip that up since there's nothing, nothing really going on at the canner at this point in time. Um, I'm going to steam can. Steam canning is the exact equivalent of hot water bathing. And I'm going to use my um, stovetop pressure canner to steam can. And I have a video um, about steam canning if you want to learn how to do that. But in essence, all you're doing is you're using the same amount of water as you normally would in uh, pressure canning. So your two or three quarts of water in your pressure canner. And then you bring your canner to a vent. And after it comes to a vent, you start your timing. Um, and you time it exactly according to your hot water bath instructions. And when I'm canning my pickled eggs, I uh, hot water bath them or steam can them for 10 minutes, you know, regardless of the size, whether it's a quart or a pint. And since you're working with vinegar and this is highly acidic, it is absolutely safe to hot water bath these eggs. Any pickles, it's absolutely safe to hot water bath them because of the acidity level in the vinegar. That's what really preserves your food. So I'm going to steam can these for 10 minutes and then I'll come back when I take them out of the canner. All right guys, so I'm back after my 10 minute hot water bath and I've allowed my canner to cool just a little bit. Um, you can see that after I allow my canner to cool for about 10 minutes, whether I'm uh, pressure canning or steam canning, I generally let it uh, cool and in pressure canning, I of course allow the pressure to completely come down to zero and for my airlock to drop down on its own and uh, then I allow it to cool an additional 10 minutes and then I usually crack open my lead, lid and just kind of set it on here um, a little bit sideways um, and I allow it to cool another 10 minutes. This really prevents a lot of what they call siphoning. Um, siphoning is when the contents of your jar uh, the difference between the super hot canner and the cooler air will make that hot fluid inside of your jar kind of expand up and come rushing out from under the lids. And if you can at all prevent that, that is uh, something that you don't necessarily want to have happen. Um, siphoning uh, allows grease and, and um, ingredients, spices, whatever, to be pushed up underneath your flat lid and eventually, even though that jar does seal, eventually it can weaken the seal and um, an extended shelf life um, um, kind of assist in that jar becoming unsealed with time. Uh, I'm not saying that siphoning is the beginning and end of everything, but if you can prevent siphoning from happening, uh, it's best that you do that. And so allowing your canner to cool and then, like I said, cracking your lid open and just kind of putting it on here sideways. You know, it's not all the way down. I've just lifted it up and I've put it on sideways and I've allowed the canner to cool for about another 10 minutes before I remove those jars. That kind of cuts down on any of that siphoning that can occur. So I'll remove my lid and take my jars of pickled eggs, processed pickled eggs, out so that you can see what they look like. Here's that one with the hot sauce. You can see the hot sauce is kind of sitting, sitting in different places on those eggs. And these will seal as they cool. Just sitting on the counter here. But look at how pretty they are.
just really nice. These are the ones that I didn't add any additional um, seasoning to. I didn't put any onions or, uh, you know, pepper flakes or anything in those. And this is the type that I really prefer in my kitchen just simply because it's a little bit more versatile. All of the rest of them I put some spices and um, I put hot pepper flakes in. And uh, as you saw, you know, a little bit of a hot sauce. This is the one with hot sauce. I have a hard time seeing what I'm doing here when I'm on cam, but you can see that there's, you know, little touches of that red or orange in there. That's the one that has the hot sauce in it. But these are just wonderful. It's a great way of, um, of storing your eggs long term. Sorry, I'm multitasking. I'm also making supper here tonight, too, uh, while I'm canning, so I need to stir this. Uh, but this is a great way of um, long-term preservation for your eggs. Uh, we love them. Uh, I'm not really sure if it's an acquired taste or not, um, but uh, even as children, when we introduced them to our children when they were small, they immediately fell in love with them. So, And you know how picky kids are. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video today. and. Uh, I hope you'll give it a try in your home. Like I said, I really can't even tell you the shelf life on these. I've had pickled eggs as old as 10 years on my shelf and they were still good. As long as that jar is sealed, everything looks okay and smells okay, they are safe to eat. Um, and I really attribute that to the 100% undiluted vinegar in my recipe. I know there's a lot of recipes out there where they dilute the vinegar, you know, 50-50 vinegar and water. Um, I really feel like the density of eggs, it's, uh, in my mind, it's important to have that 100% vinegar. I do use 5% vinegar. I don't use the 7% pickling vinegar. I know that that's out there too. Um, I've always just canned all of my pickled items with 5% vinegar and I've never had an issue. So like I said, Again, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you try it in your home. And happy canning, everybody.